trending. Before we start, thank you so much everybody for getting me to 100 subscribers already. I know that's not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. But thank you so much for letting me know that what I'm doing is interesting and I'm not a boring person. So, I have had a non-zero number of people uh, ask me to make another video on caffeinol printing because I guess it's just a confusing subject. <laughs> so, in this video I am going to walk through the whole process of taking the photo on the film, developing it, and then printing those developed images, all of it with caffeinol, and pretty much stuff that you can find around your house. And um, my setup has a few professional things in it, but a lot of this can be done with stuff around your house. Uh, there are just some slight adjustments to be made, so I will walk through those um, whenever I get to something not simple. Before everything, however, I should probably explain myself like I often forget to do. What is caffeinol? Why do this instead of regular film developing? Well, um, I just kind of said it. Caffeinol is an alternative film developing process. And, well, rodinol, which is another common process for developing black and white film, is kind of dangerous. So, people want an alternative? Caffeinol is that, and it is completely safe. So anyway, let us get into this video. So as always, we have 250 milliliters of water, and I'm putting in about four, ta four teaspoons of coffee mix. I'm using Maxwell House's coffee. Stir that up. Then you're gonna add roughly two teaspoons of washing soda and let me just say these measurements do not need to be exact the whole process is very variable finally add half about finally add half a finally add about half a tablespoon of vitamin C okay so this is going to act as our developer. Technology Connections did a much better job explaining this than I could ever do, so here's some links. Anyway, essentially how it works is there are a bunch of silver halide crystals inside the film, and BLAM! A photon of light hits one of them crystals and converts a tiny bit of it into pure silver, and then that silver acts like a seed, and the developer grows that seed and makes the whole crystal into silver, and that means it's opaque, and then the fixer washes away all the silver halides but not the silver, making it so that anything that didn't get developed is clear, and anything that did get developed due to getting hit with light is opaque, making a negative. I'm using Real Fixer, but for the photo prints, you can use 500 milliliters of water and 150 grams of salt. The homemade salt fixer only seems to work for the prints, not the film, but you don't actually really need to fix film. Uh, all the fixer really changes about the film is it makes the clear parts clear. After developing, just rinse the film off and um, probably leave it in a, in a water bath um, to make sure no developer stays on it. Because as long as it doesn't keep getting developed, the photo won't be ruined by being in the light after you've developed it. You do still need to make an adjustment when you're printing if you don't fix the film because the film is a little bit more opaque so I would give it about mm, four times as much exposure when printing because not as much light can get through the film, so you need to compensate for that. And speaking of printing, here's how I make my prints without an actual photographic enlarger. So I 3D printed this bracket 
that holds the film a little bit behind where the film plane normally is, so that way the lens can focus closer than it normally would be able to and be able to project the image here instead of here. Technically you can do this without this 3D printed bracket, but the image will have to be a lot farther away from the lens and thus it's going to be a lot larger. And when it's larger, it's also going to be darker, so it'll need more exposure. So there's some trade-offs to be had. So over here at the printing station, um, I have the camera on just a normal tripod. I put a bib on it so that light doesn't go where I don't want it to. And I just have it pointing down onto this platform where I'm going to put my photo paper when it's time to print. Um, obviously this needs a light source, so I have this um, other camera that I'm using as a light panel that goes right on top of it like that, and that is my photographic enlarger. I am quite literally using my camera backwards. So now we need something to print. And that's the beauty of this setup is that I can just take that off. Take the camera off the tripod, put the back back on, and it's ready for use just as a normal camera. So I shot part of this roll of Arista EDU, and now I'm going to shoot the rest of it. Just cut a simple leader like that, and it can be used. Just like normal. Now the important thing that I've noticed when shooting in black and white is to focus a lot more on shape and form like these rocks and get interesting textures as opposed to interesting colors because it's black and white. I like this flower. Now obviously I can't show you with the A1 what I'm going to do because it needs to be in complete darkness or in a changing bag, which is complete darkness. So I'll show you with this pre-ruined roll. So um, for the process of stick it in that beaker, we will open up the back without rewinding it, take the cartridge out pull it out a little bit more and cut it right there and then pull the film out and then see how it spools up like this that's perfect for just sticking into the developer now of course you can also do this easily with a real developing tank and a changing bag but that is how you do it without any of that. Now, a fair bit of warning. This process can sometimes lead to some artifacts, such as on this roll, no, not this roll, such as on this roll, no, not this roll either, such as on this roll, nope, actually I think it's upstairs, such as on this roll where the film rolled back and touched itself, leading to this dark streak. Also, as an interesting side note since we're here, if you hold film like this against a light background, you get a negative. But since silver is silver and reflective, it can also reflect the light. So if you put it against a dark background and have the light reflect off of it, you get positives. This looks way better in person, by the way. The film has finished baking, so we can turn on the lights. Well, that strip of film came out kind of groovy. No matter. 
Anyway, so now the next step is to print the photo. Well, actually the next step is to let it dry, but anyway, the first step is obviously to grab some photo paper. My printer makes it a bit smaller, so I have to cut it in half. And now I line it up and take the photo, except I'm kind of giving the photo. And I have this set up for 30 seconds at f5.6. Obviously results will vary and settings will vary depending on your setup. So after that I set it into the developer tray and the developer I just splash over it uh, until it gets to about the darkness I want. The developer must have been too old to work well because the final result ended up a lot lighter than I wanted both times that I tried it. So just keep that in mind, the developer has a really, really, really terrible shelf life. If you make it in the morning and use it at night, it won't work very well at all. Anyway, here's um, my third attempt at printing that photo. It's still a little dark, but I think that the problem was with me taking the photo and not the printing of it. And then this other photo was another one I took with Caffinol, and this one came out a lot better. I'm pretty happy with how that one came out. Next week I'll do a video on doing caffeinol printing with more professional stuff such as my developing tank and changing bag. So stick around for that, subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, farewell!